Hi everybody, my name is Alan Heckman. I'm a group facilitator and I also teach group facilitation methods with ICA UK. We run a, a variety of group facilitation courses. What I want to do today is to share a little bit with you from one of our courses, which is in particular about our model of leadership and what we care about and how that's reflected in our facilitation courses. Now, there's a lot that can be said about leadership. There's a lot of people who've written a lot of books um, about leadership and they sell them in airports and they mostly have their own face on the cover, right? But that's, we're not really trying to compete with that. Instead, what I want to do is offer you um, one lens to look at the subject of leadership through, uh, if you like. And this is kind of one of the things that's the basis for uh, designing the, the methods that we have and leads ICA to choosing the values that we've got. So let me think, say, explain a little bit what I mean about leadership. Now, leadership can be in a lot of different styles, but I want to look at it on a spectrum. So we'll think about our leadership styles as being on a spectrum. On one end of the spectrum is the hierarchical leader, which is the traditional top-down model of leadership. And on the other end of the spectrum, we'll call the, what we're going to call today the facilitative leader. Um, and those are uh, maybe ends of the spectrum. At any given moment, you might find, find yourself here, or you might think your organization is over here, or you might have an organization that thinks it's at this end, but really wants to be over here, or an organization that thinks it's at this end, but is fooling itself and is actually down there, right? So you can think of it as a, as a scale. So what's the difference between these two models of leadership? One is in the root assumption uh, that goes into, the, into what you're talking about here. In the hierarchical model of leadership, there's a root assumption that there's top-down authority. So there's somebody on top, and then there's somebody underneath him or her, and there's probably some people underneath them, and they're the ones who actually go and do it. So if it's working well, then information is flowing up and decisions are flowing down. They tell them what to do, they tell them what to do, right? So we're all familiar with what that looks like. It's a pyramid, basically. So what's the root assumption of the facilitative model of leadership? It's a little bit different. Um, instead, the root assumption is that there's a usefulness and a power in having different voices in the room and having the, a diverse group, different backgrounds and different experiences, different perspectives coming in to better the decisions that are made. Notice they're not actually in direct contradiction. It's not like they're opposites. They're just different approaches or different perspectives. There's another difference, which is in what the two models of leadership are claiming to know, right? The a uh, hierarchical leader knows what to do. At least you hope they know what to do. That's why you're paying them the extra money, right? They're the boss. Their job as the boss is to decide what to do. The facilitative leader doesn't necessarily know what to do. Instead, the facilitative leader is focused on methods for helping the group decide and plan and work together together. So uh, if, you, uh, if, you're, if you're a facilitative leader, you might not even have the answers about what to do. You might not know what to do. That might be outside of your areas of expertise. And instead, your job is to elicit from the group what the decisions are, what actions need to be taken, who's going to do them, that kind of thing. There's a difference in what the two models of leadership are actually seeking. In the traditional hierarchical model of leadership, the our leader is seeking the right answer, the right decision. So you've got uh, this, this thing here, we're pointing in the right direction. That's their job. If there's a best answer, their job is to come up with the best answer as well as they can. So what's the job of the facilitative leader? It's not to come up with the wrong answer, right? So instead, it's just a shift in emphasis. It's, we're really looking for decisions the group will own and actually implement. It's the right enough answer for our group. It's the one that we will actually want to work on. So maybe my bits in it and maybe somebody else's bits are in it and together we've chosen a direction that we can go in. That makes sense. It does. Let's have a look at this one. There's a difference in what these two models of leadership actually rely on. In the traditional model of hierarchical leadership, they're heavily relying on individual ability, charisma, and expertise of the leader. So um, in, in particular, sometimes we want things from our leaders that we maybe shouldn't want from our leaders. Like we want them to be good looking or we want them to, to have years of experience or something like that. Is that really what we need? Maybe it is, maybe in some circumstances, but in other circumstances, maybe that's not what we really want from our leadership, and instead it's better to look toward a facilitative model of leadership, in which case the job of the leader isn't really to, uh, to be good looking or to have the individual ability to be the hero. Instead, the, jo the job of the leader is to inspire action, 
And that's what we're looking for from our leadership is inspiring action. It's not about you as the leader. It's about how well you're able to help the group. There's a couple little things to say about this, this idea of the spectrum. You can probably tell from the way I'm talking that I actually really like this end of the spectrum, right? This is what I feel proud of. This is what I'm good at. Um, but what I don't want to do is say this end of the spectrum is rubbish. If your house is burning down, you probably want the fire department to be organized in a hierarchical way. They need to have the authority, they need, somebody needs to be in charge, they need to know what to do, they need to be able to make those right decisions, and they need to have the abilities to do it, right? What you don't want is for that fire team to say, uh, well, let's, you know, let's call a meeting of all the stakeholders. <laughs> That's not appropriate in that circumstance. And in your organization or in your circumstance, it might not be appropriate either. So it's not a matter of always going to this end. Instead, what we're saying is that this is where we've been stuck for a long time. And there are occasions when it is actually useful to push it toward this end of the spectrum. And that's what we're looking to do. Now, at ICA, we run training courses teaching methods for getting really good participation um, when you want to act in the role of a facilitator or a facilitative leader. So what we're actually offering in those methods is ways to do it this end of the spectrum really well when it's the right time. So when it's your, when it's your moment to be a facilitative leader, it's not easily slipping back into the old ways of doing things. Instead, we're offering you the methods and the techniques and the experience that you need to do this end of the spectrum really well. All right, I think that's enough for now. Thanks for listening. As always, we're trying out this YouTube thing, so um, if you want to, if you want to, if you thought this was a good video, please do click like, click subscribe. We'd be really happy to see you. Um, always check out our other videos and leave a comment if you want us to talk about something in specific. Okay, thanks everybody. Take care.